State at Texas Tech this weekend. Three o'clock tip time, ESPN2. Right now, Ken Palm favors Texas Tech 73 to 66. So the Red Raiders at home, they have the advantage over K State. Uh, this will be the only time that these two teams meet each other this season. So only mm -hmm. one chance at Texas Tech this year for K State. It will be on the road at United Supermarkets Arena, which, as we talked about earlier, it's not the easiest place to go, especially when Tech is good. They have an engaged fan base right now because the team is 13-2 and two and 2-0 two and oh in league play. We just talked a little bit about Joe Toussaint. He's one piece of this machine. The big ticket item, though, is probably Pop Isaacs, who, yes, despite all this stuff going on there, he is still playing. So tip of the hat to Grant McCaslin for wanting to win basketball games and Screw being a good person after that. And the president and the president, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wink, wink, and the president. Uh, what do you expect from K-State's trip to Lubbock this weekend, and, and what should they be prepared for? I think it's going to be a nail-biter. I really do. I One, because you have a guy that's coached with Grant McCasland, and you have a player that's played for Grant McCasland. I think these two teams are probably built similarly, have basically probably – you know, I I would assume the same basketball principles and thoughts for the most part. I'm sure they're, you know, I don't. I guess I haven't dissected it too enough, too much. But I assume Texas Tech's also running the same exact defense that Kansas State's running. So I think these teams are so similar. And Grant McCaslin's basically running, you know, the opposite offense that he did in North Texas. And now Jerome Tang acknowledged that at his Thursday press conference too. He said. Well, if Grant brought what he was doing in North Texas to Big 12, he'd probably be in trouble because he said the, the defenses in the Big 12 are too good, too athletic, and too suffocating to just take the air out of the ball and hope to grind out a victory every night. He said that's just not a great winning formula. Now, Bruce Weber would probably disagree. Yeah. but uh, uh, So that's why Grant McCaslin's probably changed it, and obviously maybe he's trying to fit, you know, fit what they do to the parts that they do have too, and that's a sign of a good coach. So not – look, this – if you're going coming into this assuming that it's going to look like North Texas, it isn't. It's not going to look like North Texas. Yep. Yeah, North Texas, they they were okay winning a game like 45 to 37. Uh, Texas Tech this year, they've been on a tear scoring the basketball. Um, it has been since November 12th. That would be the last time that uh, Texas Tech failed to score – uh, at least 69 points in a game. Uh, and they've scored so, 80 a lot. Yeah, they, they've 90 against Oklahoma State, 78 against Texas, and then you can go down the list, 85 against North Alabama, 96 against Sam Houston State, a bunch of 70s and 80s. Uh, and they lost an overtime game to Butler, 103-95 to this year. Um, they did, if you're trying to play the common opponent game and you go, man, they beat North Alabama 85 to 57. They beat Oral Roberts 82 to 76. They did lose to Villanova 85 to 69 this season. So it's tough to play that game. It's a lot easier to do against, you know, high level opponents like Villanova. And now that was a neutral site game for them in at the battle for Atlantis. Speaking of Pop Isaacs, uh, and K-State obviously got Villanova at home. But the fact that K-State was able to beat Villanova, a team that was capable of winning by 16 over Texas Tech, that is significant. And that tells me there is a chance that K-State can go down and get this win. And the seven po points that Tech, you know, is, is favored by in Ken Palm and probably close to what the line will end up being, probably either six and a half or seven and a half. I think K-State can keep it closer than that, the way they're playing right now. Everything that you're basing these, this stuff off of right now, K-State is playing as a different team and a better team than everything that came before the UCF game outside of a handful of, of games. And I think you're starting to see K-State get it figured out. And the biggest benefit to the Wildcats right now, and everybody knows I'm not a big defense guy, you know, I take it or leave it. You only win the game if you put the ball in the hole more times than the opponent. But K-State's defense is legit, and we've talked about this a lot. Like, the offense and everything that goes with that is coming along. It's not necessarily NCAA tournament caliber quite yet. The defense is. The defense has K-State as one of the better teams in the country in that department. I mean, the, the efficiency numbers keep going up. They're inside the top 40 now, and 30. it is the real deal. It's going to give teams problems. 
So if K-State can just keep giving themselves average at best offensive performances and maybe having a guy and a half go and have a big consistent night for you, that gives you an opportunity in every game. And I think they're at the stage now where through through two conference games, we've seen Tyler Perry, Arthur Kaluma, and Cam Carter all have a game where they stepped up. For Perry, it was against UCF, and then we got Kaluma and Carter against West Virginia. I've got faith that at least one of those guys can give you a boost at, at Texas Tech, and I really do think K-State is going to have the opportunity to win this game. I'm not saying they do, but I do think it ends up being closer than those seven points, at least the field of the game. Maybe, you know, fouling and whatever gets it to seven, but this is going to be a good game. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And the two teams know each other too well. The coaches know each other too well for it to not be tight, in my opinion. A couple things in response to what you said. Not just top 40. I think it's now in the defense is now in the top 30 or very close to it. Uh, 34th right now in defensive okay. efficiency. I, I, some of the things changed there because I think yeah. right after the West Virginia game, I think was the 32. Yeah. So we're they're, they're in the ballpark. And by the way, like a month ago, it was like 121. So mm -hmm. it's been lights out for the last month. And then you talk about the big three stepping up, whether it's Tyler Perry and TCF or Kaluma or Carter against West Virginia. I will say it's got it's got to be two guys. I think at Tech to get the win. Yeah. Yep. No, I would I would agree with that. And you are getting to the stage of conference play where you're going to face more teams where you're going to need more guys on any given night to kind of come through and help you out. I mean, I, I think that is and, something and Tech's to keep not in deep. mind. One thing to take in mind, take into account, is Tech is not deep. I was looking at some of the stuff that KSU fans sent me for the preview. Mm -hmm. They only have, I'm looking at here, probably similar to K-State, uh, although for K-State it's because they lost Tomlin, Glover's hurt, but Tech only has seven guys averaging 10 minutes or more. Yeah, yeah, that tech tech is fairly similar to K State. They'll they'll shift around their lineup a little bit more, so they're a little more consistent with guys that they will put into the game. But it is probably a team that is they're closer to being eight deep than what K State is. But in reality, Tech is probably a lot closer to being a firm seven, um, and they're going to wear their guards in the ground very similar to what K State is kind of having to do right now with Perry and Carter. So I think it's going to be a fascinating matchup and seeing how, I mean, this is kind of a, a game where you're going to look to Cam Carter again, probably because there are more offensive weapons at the guard spot for Texas Tech. And, you know, I, I'm starting to think Arthur Kaluma probably needs to be the best player for this team in, in, in an ideal situation. Like if you want, you know, the dreamland. I think Cam Carter would be that guy. I just, I think Arthur Kaluma has the better chance of becoming that, but uh, Cam Carter with his ability and the type of player he is, if you get the best version of him, that that's the guy that I want to step up for you. And I, I think you need to get another good game out of Cam Carter. The one thing that I would beg of him is just make a couple more of those threes, just a couple more of them. Sure. Like he gets some really good looks just bury him, and, and the game goes a lot differently for K-State. I will say that I think the most important player most of these road games will be Tyler Perry because we they say at the NCAA tournament, like the great equalizer, especially for the underdog, is the three-point shot. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Big 12, that's when you go on the road, right, yeah. is the three-point shot. So if Tyler Perry can go out there and make four or five, even six threes again, I mean, that that's probably the most favorable recipe for Kansas State because it's also not asking a lot. That's asking a guy to do what he can do. Yeah, that's true. And look, I will say, I mean, there is the motivation here for Tyler Perry. Like, no matter how he feels about Grant McCaslin, like, that's his old coach. I would hope that that creates some fire and some energy that we see the more confident second half Tyler from the UCF game that isn't so passive. And when there's a shot, take it, not overthinking things, and you get a really strong performance out of him that can kind of carry you through and be good against Texas Tech. So I this is another opportunity where that UCF, we thought maybe it would be the breakout, kind of regressed against uh, West Virginia. But as you said, like still doing some good things. 
he's got the motivation here. Big road game against your former coach. Like, go out there and make some plays. Uh, that'll that'll be an exciting thing to see. So I, I think that's a, a, a benefit to K-State this weekend. I, something, you know, we talked about the road stuff a lot already. In, and I'm, we don't really have to – this won't really be a discussion on that, but just an observation. I believe Kansas State's only had two true road games so far, um, if I remember correctly. And they've both been blowout wins, right? LSU yeah. and West Virginia. Yep. So – Two true road games, two true blowouts. This is a, it's, it's a road team, so maybe maybe yes, you're going to take the cast by like a thousand this weekend. Is that what I'm hearing? You're the you're doing the pick and preview because you're the one on the hot streak. So um, yeah. that onus is on you. So uh, I'm not I'm be, not I'm not so confident in what my pick's going to be this week. I don't des, know that dessert, I dessert in Lubbock. That's what you just got to call the pick and preview dessert in Lubbock. Mm. Well, I don't know. You know what, what, I wonder what's a dessert spot in Lubbock. Yeah. They probably got churros of some kind down there. They they served him at the football game, and the Pop Tarts Bowl guy really loved them. So uh, oh, that would I do love a good enough. churro. I do love a good churro. I think the first time I ever had it was in Lubbock at Jones AT and T Stadium. So I couldn't really give. Yeah, do it with churros. like vanilla sauce too. Mm, interesting. 